Hey guys, it's Young Mind HS here, back with another video. And today I'm going to be making the ultimate unturned server and showing you how to make it. I'm basically putting all the knowledge I have of unturned servers and combining it into one. So if you guys did enjoy this video, a like and subscribe would be much appreciated. And if you want to go that extra mile, I do have memberships on my channel now. You can join for as little as £2 a month. If you want to find out more, click that join button and you'll get to hear more of my lovely voice. Then the next thing is my Twitter, at YoungMindHS. If you could follow me over there, that'd be great. I'm trying to get a following over there so I can kind of tweet more. And then the last thing, most of this content was provided by YoungMindHS.com, my website, where there will be written um, versions of how to do all these things. So if you don't understand something completely, I recommend going over there. Link in the description for everything. So the first thing we need to do, obviously, is make the server. So what you're going to have to do is go into the description and come to Steam CMD. This will basically um, take you to this page and you want to click on 1.1 Windows. Then you want to hit the two second uh, thing here and this will basically start downloading a zip. Then when we get that zip, you want to extract it and it should be called steamcmd.exe. Now we need to make a folder and you need to call it Steam. It must be called Steam. You can't call it anything else. Um, I don't know if you need to capitalize the S, but I recommend you just do it to be safe. So then you drag the Steam CMD into there, double click and launch the Steam CMD. What this will basically do is install Steam CMD onto your desktop or wherever you've put it. Um, and then what this is basically doing is updating Steam CMD. So Steam CMD is what most servers use now. Um, my tutorials in the past didn't use it, um, but all my newer tutorials do. And it's basically so you can keep your um, server up to date at all times. Um, so as we can see, it's almost done there. Extracting, extracting, take a while, um, but again, it's all based on your internet speed. So yeah, you can still make servers via the old method, um, but they won't be updated and they won't be supported by RocketMod. So if you just want an unturned server, you can do it by that method, but I really don't recommend it. I recommend following this tutorial the whole way through, and you'll basically find out everything. So now that that's fully complete, you don't want to um, quit. What you want to do is go to the next link in the description or just follow along. And what you want to do is type in login anonymous. So login anonymous. Then that will basically log you into the Steam network. And then after that's happened, what you can do is type in the next line, which is app underscore update space 1110390. What this is basically doing is it's telling the console to update the app 1110390. Now 1110390 is unturned. So by doing this what you're basically saying is you're telling Steam check if unturned is installed in the, the Steam folder on the desktop and if it's not what you should do is install it. If we do have it installed, you only need to update it. And this is why Steam CMD is so useful, because it will basically update your servers so they'll always be on um, the right version. Now, this is especially important with Unturned 2 coming out. Nelson has some huge plans for um, 2020 and Unturned. So I definitely recommend using this method. It's far superior from uh, the previous version. So I'm basically just going to skip ahead here. I don't want you to sit through me downloading and you downloading. That would be a bit painful. Um, so I'll see you in a minute. Now as you can see it's completed. So what we want to do is type quit. And this is very important. You don't want to um, click the X at the top right. So you type quit and then we're going to go in there. Now we can see that this has all been installed. We want to go to Steam Apps, um, Common. 
and we want to go to U3DS. What this means is unturned free dedicated server. So we want to click on that and then we're basically looking for the one called example-server.bat. What you want to do is right click on the example server, hit copy, click off it, right click on um, just the white bit and paste. Then we can rename this. I'm just going to call it um, server starter dot bat. Then what I'm going to do is right click on it and edit with notepad. Um, you might not have notepad. You can just use um, normal um, notepad. I mean, you might not have notepad plus plus. You can just use normal notepad if you want, or you can get notepad plus plus. Then basically what we're going to do is just remove this. And after the um, dot BAT, we're going to type um, dash port. Then we're going to do a slash 27015, then plus secure server. And then this where it says example is your server name. So I'm just going to call mine young mind, uh, young mind HS serve underscore server. Don't just put spaces um, because it can, you know, but, uh, mess up the server. So don't have something like that. If you need a space, do an underscore. And then save that. Then what you want to do is run server starter dot bat. And this will basically load up your server. Um, so again, the first time you do this, it'll take a while. And it'll basically just load it all up for you. Again, depending on your computer speed, it can take a while. Um, but what you want to do whenever this pops up, you just want to hit allow access. And I think that's it up now. Yep, so as you can see, the server is up now. So that's the server created. Um, for the unturned one, you type shut down, um, not uh, quit. And then that will shut it down. So this is the server part made. As you can see, the servers, Young HS server, we have the server here. Next, I'm going to talk about all the server commands and how to customize them. If you came here through a timestamp, what we did previously was create the server and set it up. For this step, you will need a server, but that's all. So what you want to do to customize your server commands is click um, server. And then we're looking at this command.dat file. What you want to do is right click on it and edit it with notepad. It should be blank, but if you have stuff in there, just delete it all and start fresh. So the first command we need is name. This is the name of your server as it will appear publicly. So if I was to type youngmind hs, that would appear on the server search page. So that would appear when people type in young mind HS, this one would come up. Very simple. Then the next one is password. Again, this is a very simple one. Um, it's just a, you know, a series of letters or numbers or whatever you want it to be. Um, and that's the password. So I'm just going to set it as one, two, three, four. Then the next one is port. Now this is 27015. This is basically the port that will be open so people can join your game. And we'll get into that further in the tutorial with a port forwarding section. Then the next one is map. Now obviously it has to be um, one of the maps that are in the game. I will speak about later in this tutorial how to add Steam custom maps. But for now I'm just going to set it to PEI for basics. This is case sensitive. So, for example, if you were going to put a map called Washington, you would need to capitalize the W. Then the next one is Max Players. This, again, is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a number um, with the amount of Max Players. I'm just going to set mine to 8. The next one is Perspective. And this can either be first, first, third, or both. 
First is they'll only be in first person, so it'll be like they're looking through the eyes of the character. Third person is like you're sitting kind of over their shoulder, looking over them, and both players can switch between the two. I'm going to put mine on both. Then the next one is mode. This is either easy, normal, or hard. Again, I'm just going to leave mine on normal, but again, uh, they match up with the difficulties in game. So if you enjoy playing on easy, put your server on easy. If you enjoy playing on hard, put your server on hard. Then the next one is PvP or PvE. What this means is player versus player or player versus enemy. In simple terms, what it means is do you want players to be able to fight each other? And let's say I do, then I would have PvP. If I want players to just be able to fight zombies, then I'd put PvE. For the meaning of the tutorial, I'll just put PvP. Then the next one is, um, I'm trying to remember actually. Yeah, the next one is uh, cheats. So this can either be enable or disable. Again, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is if you want your admins to be able to spawn items uh, like cars, guns, weapons, things like that. I'm going to leave this on. Then the next one is queue size. Basically, this is how many people can wait in line to join your server and um, before it won't let any more. Again, for the purposes of this video, since I'm only having 8 max players, I'm just going to leave the queue size at 4. Then the next one is timeout. This is how long someone um, has to be AFK, so away from the keyboard before they get kicked from the server. Now this is in seconds as well. So if you wanted 5 minutes, you would put 300 seconds, and that's what I'm going to leave mine at. Now this isn't someone just not doing anything in their base, they have to literally not be moving, crafting, touching their keyboard, or doing anything. Then the next one is cycle. So what this means is it's how long the day-night cycle takes. So how long it goes to, to take to go from day to night to day again. I'm going to put this on 5 minutes as well. Then the next one is chat rate. This one's pretty self-explanatory again. It's basically how long it takes between messages. So say if I send a message to uh, the world saying hi guys, then how, lo how many seconds would I need to wait before I could say you'll find HS here. Oh that was terrible. Um, and I think I'm going to put mine at uh, 3 seconds. Then the next one is um, join chat. So basically um, we're looking to log chat. So you would put basically log chat. And this is basically, um, sorry, you would put log and then um, the format is like this basically. So if you want to log chat, you want to leave the first one as Y. If you don't want to log chat, you want to put the first one as N. So it stands for yes or no. So log chat. So the first one is chat. So yes, I want to log chat. The next one is when people join and leave. I want to log that as well. So yes, I want to log when people join and leave. Then the next one is def. Yes, I want to uh, log when people die and how they die. And then the last one is anti-cheat. Yes, I want to uh, check if people have anti-cheat enabled. Now, again, if you're running a server where hacks are allowed, um, or you're running a server where things are a bit different, then you can change kind of how, what you want to log. Then the next one is hide underscore admins. What this means is that people in your server will not be able to see who um, the admin is. Now this won't hide who the owner is, um, which we'll speak about in a little bit, but it'll hide who the admins are. So it's very useful if you're on a PvP server to do this, because a lot of people when they die tend to get a bit solely and they, um, they like to call admin abuse. Then the next one is gold. 
Um, again, unless you have gold, which is uh, like the DLC thing for Unturned that gives you more benefits and things, I wouldn't recommend using this to be honest. So I'm going to turn it off. And you turn it off by just not including it. Then the next one is Sync. What this means is you can basically sync between um, servers. So say if you have two servers, um, one of them's on PEI and one of them's on Washington, then players can kind of transfer their inventories between the two servers. And this is very useful. So that's definitely a thing you should look out for. Then the next one is, um, I'm going to turn that off just because I don't have any more servers. Then the next one is filter. What this will basically do is filter out um, any non-English characters. So say if you don't want um, people with Chinese characters in their name joining and speaking Chinese, then you can turn this on. But again, it's, it's not really a big problem for me, so I'm just going to leave it off. Then the next one is owner. And then what you input here is your Steam ID. Um, so if you don't know how to get that, just go to Google and type in what's my Steam ID and you'll basically just put in your profile name and then you would put it here. Then the next one is Loadout. Now if you're going to be using Rocket Mod, um, there's not really a point in using Loadout because um, Kits is just a better version basically. Um, but I'll just show you how to use it anyway. So you would type loadout and then you type the skill set ID. So for example, uh, fireman is number five. And then you would basically just give them a bunch of items. So this means loadout five, so fireman, gets um, uh, eagle fire, which is four, and three magazines for it. So whenever a fireman loads into the world, they would get an eagle fire and three magazines for it. But again, if you're using Rocket Mod, and I will be setting it up later in this tutorial, um, this is basically obsolete. Then the next one is Votify. Now this is in the same format as um, Log, so uh, it looks like that. But there's uh, a couple more for them. So um, Votify, the first one is or is voting allowed? So that is a Y or an N. Um, if you want people to be able to vote on your server, then set it to Y. If you don't, then set it to N. Then the next one is pass cooldown. So this basically means after a vote has passed, so it's been successful, how long should it be before people can vote again? And this is in seconds. So I'm gonna put on my server, if a vote is successful, it will take 60 seconds for the next one to load. Then the next one is fail cooldown. So this is if a vote is unsuccessful, how long will it take until the next vote is allowed? So I'm going to set this to two minutes. So it stops people spamming. Then the next one is vote duration. I'm going to set this to 30 seconds. So that's basically how long will the vote be able to be voted on. Then the next one is minimum vote percentage. So what this means is basically what percent of people will have to vote yes for a vote to pass. So for example, if I was voting to kick someone and there was 10 people in the server, um, six of them would need to vote yes for that person to get kicked. Then the last one is minimum vote. So this is how many people need to be in the server before Votify can even be used. And I'm gonna set it to four. Then the next one is welcome. So basically what this is, is your welcome message that people get when they join the server. So I'm just gonna set it to, hi guys, young mind HS here. Then you can pick a RGB value. Um, so again, I'm, I, I don't know the, the RGB off the top of my head, so I'm just going to go with something random. Just going to do 120 for all. Um, but that's how you display the RB, uh, RGB. You do the slash at the end of your message, and then uh, the RGB values. Then the last one is bind. 
and then you would put the IP. Um, I don't recommend you use bind. It's basically if your primary internet connection goes down for the server, um, which IP should it then connect to? This is more for server hosters than um, home based users. So I don't really think this is for you in particular, but you know what it does if you need to use it. So that's all the unturned server commands. The next thing I'm going to talk about is how to add custom Steam content to your server. In this part of the video, we're going to talk about how to load custom workshop content to your server. If you came here for a timestamp, all you'll need to have is an unturned server. So what you want to do is go into your server and find workshop download config .json. Then you want to right click it and edit it. Then you want to become, uh, come into the middle of the file ID bit and hit enter twice. Now what we need to do is find the mods we want to install. So I'm just going to pick some more random ones. Um, I'm going to go with good and admin close. So basically to add it, what you want to do is copy the number after ID equals, but before uh, the ampersand and paste it in the middle. So now let's find another one we want to add. Uh, so we'll do craftable tents, get the number here. And to add another one, what you want to do is put a comma, press enter, and type in the number. Let's get one more for good luck. IC's collection, we'll do that. So we'll get the number, copy it, comma, enter, paste, and then we want to save it. Then we want to go to um, the server root directory and run our server. So it's server starter .bat. As you can see, it's load all of our server configs from before. And now it's going to set up the server and then install the Steam items. So we'll see that in just a second here. As you can see here, waiting for the Steam servers and now it's began downloading them. So you can see downloaded all of them. Um, again, depending on how many you do or how long it takes, um, you know, it can take a while. But the good thing about this is you don't need to download them all in one go. You can basically add to this as you go on. Um, so then you want to close that down and this is your server up and running. In the next part of this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to load custom workshop maps. In this part of the tutorial, we'll talk about how to load custom Steam Workshop maps to your unturned server. If you've came here for a timestamp, all you'll need is a setup and working unturned server. So the first thing you want to do is come to Steam, go to Workshop uh, on your unturned, and we want to find the map we want to install. So I'm just going to search by top of all time and pick the first one. So Milton State. So what you want to do is subscribe to it and wait for it to download. Again, depending on your internet speed, this can take a while. So we just want to wait for it to download so that we're able to um, use it. Almost there. There we go. So now that it's downloaded, what you want to do is go back to your library, click on Unturned, right click on it, hit Properties, Browse Local Files, then you want to go to Steam Apps, Workshop, Content, 304930, and then you want to search it by um, Date Modified, because that will get you the recent map and you just want to check that it's the one you just downloaded. And as we can see, it is Milton State. So then we want to copy it. And now you want to go to your desktop or wherever you had your server, open it up, go into um, Steam Apps, Common, Unturned Free Direct Server, Servers, um, Young Mind HS Server for me, Workshop, Maps, and just paste it in there. 
Now the last thing we need to do is go to server and commands.dat and then we need to change it to the name. So it's the name that's in here, not in the Steam Workshop. So you want to go here, so it's this name exactly. So it could be called something different on the Steam Workshop than it is in there, so that's something to watch out for. I recommend just copying it in so you get everything correct. Then remember to save, and we're just going to make sure everything's loaded, and also speed it up so it loads the map for the first time. So we're going to click serverstarter.bat, and it should load everything up. As you can see, it's set up the top there, um, set map to Milton State, and what you want to do is just let it run once and check there's no errors, because that's the main thing you're looking for. It should load everything up here, waiting for Steam servers, it's just downloading all the old workshop content we did, and then you can see it's loading level, and everything's loaded perfectly. So if you've got some errors here, it's probably the map, so if you're downloading a popular map, then um, you shouldn't get any errors. But if you download some of those one-star maps, you can get a lot of errors because there's actually quite a lot of stuff that goes into making an unturned map. In the next part of this tutorial, I'm going to tell you how to edit the in-game stats of zombies using and loot drops and vehicles and basically everything in the game using the config.json file. In this part of the video, we'll be talking about how to edit in-game stats such as zombie HP, loot drop chances and vehicle speed using the config.json file. If you've came here through a timestamp, all you'll need is a setup unturned server. So you just want to go into your server and find the config.json and you want to right click and edit. Now um, you basically want to go, so you'll start up at the top um, and you want to ignore browser and server and you want to start here. So if you set your game mode to easy, you'll edit the easy section. If you set your game mode to normal, then you'll edit the normal section. And if you set your game mode to hard, then you'll edit the hard section. Now, because I set mine to E normal, um, I'm going to be editing here. So the first one is spawn chance. And this is a number between 0 and 1. Um, where it's basically a percentage. So 1 would be 100% and 0 would be 0%. Um, and this is basically the chance for items to spawn. Um, so basically, if you put it as 1, items will always spawn. Then uh, despawn drop time. This is basically like how long it will take to for an item to despawn if it's dropped. I'll leave it on 6 minutes, which is... Um, I uh, leave it on 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes. Um, then the next one is despawn natural time. So this is just how long it'll take in the world for items to despawn. I've put it on 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes. Then there's respawn time. Um, um, so this is basically how long it'll take items to respawn. Um, so I've put it on 2 minutes. Then um, quality full chance which is basically the chance of getting a quality weapon or item rather just in general and um, so if you set this to one then it'll be a hundred percent chance of getting a quality item or if you set it to 0 0.5 then it's a 50 percent chance etc then the next one is quality multiplier so this is like a multiplier value boost for the amount of quality an item has um, and this can be anything this isn't between one and um, zero this can be basically any multiplying number so you can put a thousand if you want then there's gun bullets full chance so this is the chance that a gun will spawn with full bullets and um, so this is a number between zero and one and then gun bullets multiplier is a multiplier so what is the kind of odds of that happening multiplied um, and this can be anything then there's a uh, magazine bullets full chance so this is the chance that a magazine will have uh, full bullets um, so if you set it to 1 again it will always have full bullets when you pick up a magazine and if you set it to 0 it will not uh, ever have full bullets then the next one is bullets multiplier again it's the same as all the other multipliers and then there's crate bullets full chance so this is the chance that a crate will have full bullets and then the multiplier for it then the last one here is has durability 
So this basically means, um, can items have durability in the game? If you don't want them to have durability and you're fine with them breaking, um, and you don't want them to break rather than you set it to false, if you want items to break, you set it to true. So the next one is vehicles. So this is has battery chance. So this basically is um, the chance that it has a battery, so 0 0.8 I've set it to, which basically means an 80% chance um, that a car has a battery. Then min battery charge. So the minimum battery charge a car can have is 50. Um, so it can be 50% charged. And then the maximum is 75, which basically means 75% um, charge is the maximum. Then has tire chance is 0 0.85, so that's 85%. Um, so that means every time a car spawns, there's an 85% chance it has uh, uh, tires, and there's an 80% chance it has a battery. Then respawn time, so this is when a car is destroyed, how long will it take to come back, and that's 300 seconds, which is 5 minutes. Then unlocked after seconds in safe zone. Um, I'm trying to remember what that one actually means. I believe um, it basically means if a car's in a safe zone for a certain amount of time, so someone leaves it in there, um, then how long will it take to be unlocked so you can steal it, basically. I believe that's what that one is, um, but that was just added recently, so I'm not exactly sure. And that's set to 3,600 seconds, which is... Uh, 10 hours? I might be wrong on that. That might be... Um, I'm not sure about my maths. But I feel like it's maybe... 10 hours or 6 hours, I might be wrong. Uh, maybe 6. Um, armor multiplier um, basically just means um, like it's a multiplier for the vehicle health. So this is all in the vehicle section. So armor multiplier here basically means um, the vehicle. And then child explosion mul uh, armor multiplier. So this basically means when the car explodes, how much damage should it do to other cars in the area. Then there's gun low cal damage, gun high cal, so it's how much damage should it take from guns, high caliber and low caliber. How much damage should it take from uh, melee. And then um, max instances, tiny, like I believe um, that this is to do with the type of cars that spawn. So cars will fit into one of these categories and this is the amount of instances you want to be able to spawn of this type. Again, that's a new one for me as well, so I'm not 100% on that. Um, if I can work it out or I find out what it does exactly, um, it'll be in the description. So um, what I believe is, is those instances. Then the next section is zombies. So this is um, spawn chance, so that's you know 25%. So there's 25% that, uh, uh, that a zombie will spawn. So basically the way unturned maps work is there's nodes on the map um, and these are basically spawners uh, for zombies and each tick of the game there's a chance that it spawns a zombie um, so what kind of percentage do you want it to be? So I've set it to 25. Loot chance, um, this is basically the chance that a zombie will drop loot so if you set it to 1 they'll always drop loot, set it to 0 they never drop loot um, exactly. Then these ones are all the same so Crawler, Sprinter, Flanker, Burner and Acid Chance. This is basically the chance that a zombie will be one of those when it spawns. Um, and again, it's a... This isn't actually between 1, so this is between 0 and 0 0.5. Um, so you can't have a 100% chance, you can only have a 50% chance that um, a zombie is one of these. Then, uh, Boss Electric Chance... I believe um, basically means the chance for a zombie to be a lightning strike um, and then this is the decimals the wind one is the chance for it to be a ground pounder and the fire one is the chance for it to be a flamethrower then there's a respawn and then spirit I'm assuming that is another boss, another version um, but yeah I might be wrong but I believe that's what that is as well um, respawn day night time is the length of, uh, of respawn for zombies during the day and then this is the length of zombies during the night so it'll basically take uh, 360 that's uh, 6 minutes so it takes 6 minutes during the day um, to for them to spawn and then during night it takes um, 30 seconds then there's respawn beacon time 
Um, so that's basically the length of respawn for zombies during a horde beacon. Um, and this is zero seconds, so they'll spawn immediately. Then there's damage and armor multiplier. These are basically, um, so a multiplier, so the damage multiplier is how much damage the zombies do, and the armor multiplier is how much damage you do to them. Then there's a um, backstab multiplier, which is basically if you sneak up on them, how much damage you'll do. Then there is a beacon experience multiplier. It's pretty simple, it's just how much experience, like how much they're worth um, during a beacon horde. Then a uh, full moon experience is how much they're worth during a full moon. Then there's min drop and max drop, so this is how much they can drop um, loot wise. Then there's min mega drops, min max drops, um, max mega drops, sorry. And then min boss drops and max boss drops. So this is how much they can drop. Then there's slow movement, so if you want the zombies to be slow, set this to true. Can stun, this is if you want to be able to stun the zombies. Um, again, if you want, if you're looking for like a hard game, you can turn this off, and there's basically no way to stun them, so they'll always run at you. Only critical stuns. If you turn this on, it means only critical hit will stun them. Weapons use player damage. Um, this is basically like your weapons will do more damage if you're damaged. Um, can target barricades. That means obviously zombies can tar target barricades. They can target structures, and they can target vehicles. And then beacon max rewards is how many rewards you get from a beacon on max. Beacon max participants is how many people can participate in a beacon. And beacon rewards multiplier basically just um, multiplies the rewards. Then there is animals. So respawn time is again in seconds. Damage multiplier is how much damage they do. And armor multiplier is how much damage you do to them. Then you have all these instances again. And then weapons use um, player damage again. Then there's barricades, so this is the time a barricade takes to um, decay, and this is in seconds. So, um, uh, it's, I don't know, it's close to like, it's a lot of time. Um, so that's basically how long before a barricade just rots away pretty much. Then there's armor low tier and armor high tier. Um, so this is how much armor they have, and it's the, the multiplier for it basically. So it's like the... Um, armor multiplier is the multiplier for the barricade health. Then there's um, how much damage high and low tier guns do to it and melee damage to it. Then there's structures. So this is the exact same as barricades um, but it's just so you can change the difference between them. Then there is um, players. So this is probably the longest section um, out of this file. So this is um, Minimum food requirement to regen health. Minimum water uh, requirement to regen health. Um, the length of time to pass before regenerating health. Uh, the length of time to pass before lowering food. And this is all in um, ticks, by the way. Um, food damage ticks is the amount of damage done when food is at zero. So every tick, it'll do 15 damage at the moment. Um, water use ticks, so again this is the amount of damage done when water is at zero, so 270 per tick. Then there's a water damage tick, which is, um, sorry, um, the use one was uh, the amount of time before um, having no water will affect you, and then the damage is how much it does. Then there's um, virus infect, um, which is basically how long... Um, how infected you need to be before you get infected, if you know what I mean. Then there's virus use ticks, which is the length of time to pass before lowering immunity due to infection, which is this one. Then there's virus uh, damage ticks, which is the amount of damage done at immunity zero. Then there is um, leg regen ticked, which is basically the amount of time before your leg will heal. Bleed damage ticks, um, the amount of damage you get from bleeding. Um, Blood regen ticks, so how long it takes to regenerate um, from a bleed. Armor multiplier is basically um, how effective the player's armor is. So if you wanted to take more damage, you would just change this and lower it. Experience multiplier is how much experience you get. So if you wanted more experience, you can raise that. Detect radius multiplier 
is basically um, how big your detection radius is, so how long it'll take zombies to spot you if you're running by. Um, then there is um, Ray Aggressor Distance, which I'm not actually sure what it does. Then there's lose skills PVP, and it's like how how much um, what percentage of the skills you'll lose, and it's the same for that. And lose items, so that's set in all, and you'll lose 75% of your skills, but you'll lose 100% of your items. And then there's lose clothes, and lose weapons for PVP and PVE. Then there's can hurt legs, very self-explanatory. Can break legs again, self-explanatory. Can fix legs, self-explanatory, can start, can stop bleeding, self-explanatory. Spawn with max skills, so that's if you want to spawn basically with all the skills. Spawn with stamina skills, allow instant headshots and allow per character saves. Again, this is just a simple true or false if you want them on or off. Then there is objects. Um, so these are a bit confusing. So binary state reset time multiplier. Um, so this one is basically um, a numerical multiplier for the length of time to pass before a binary state resets. Um, so it is confusing, but it's basically how long it takes um, before um, an item, uh, an object, reset to its original kind of position. Then there's fuel fuel reset multiplier. Now this is kind of how long it'll take before fuel respawns. That one's simple. Same with water. Same with resources. Um, and then rubble reset multipliers, how long it'll take rubble to reset and then allow holiday drops is basically do you want um, holiday themed drops so you can turn this on or off, it's really up to your preference then there is events um, so, <clears throat> so this is rain frequency, so when it rains what is the minimum frequency so how much will it rain, what's the maximum frequency what's the minimum time it can rain What's the maximum time it can rain? Um, what's the minimum snow frequency? Maximum snow frequency? Minimum snow duration? Maximum snow duration? Um, airdrop frequency minimum? Airdrop frequency maximum? How quick the airdrop is and how fast it is? Um, how forceful it is, sorry. Then there's uh, arena min players. So this is the minimum of players for arena. Arena compactor damage. Um, arena clear timer, arena finale timer, arena restart timer, arena compactor delay timer, and arena compactor pause timer. Then there's the option to use airdrops. Um, and also if you turn off airdrops here, you won't get holiday drops. Um, so then arena co use compactor pause, um, so that's if you want to pause it. And then arena compactor speed uh, for each uh, version. Again, this is very complicated, these two sections, um, so I wouldn't recommend messing around with them unless you know what you're doing. And then the final one is gameplay. So repair level max um, is basically the maximum repair level you can be. Hit markers, true, uh, we want hit markers. Crosshair, true, we want crosshairs. Uh, ballistics basically means bullet physics, um, so that's true. Chart, um, you can either have that or not. Satellite, you can either have that or not. Compass, you can either have that or not. Group map and group HUD. Um, group player list. Allow static groups, allow dynamic groups, and allow shoulder camera. Are all just things that you might want in the game. You can either turn these on or off. Friendly fire, again, that's pretty self explanatory. If you want people to be able to shoot each other, then that's fine. Timer exit, 10. Timer respawn, 10. Timer home, 10. Uh, 30, rather. Timer leave group 30 and max group members 0. So uh, you would basically just input all these and then choose which ones you want and then you would save them. But make sure it'll only affect the um, specific bit you put them in. So mine will only affect normal. If I change the game to easy or hard then um, it won't have these changes. In the next section of this tutorial I'll be talking about how to use Hamachi to get your friends to join. In this part of the video I'll be talking about how to um, set up Hamachi so your friends can join. If you've came here for a timestamp all you need is a setup unturned server. Now so what you want to do is go to Hamachi and click um, create a new network. If you don't have Hamachi there'll be a link in the description to get it. So then you just want to click here and enter a network ID so I'm just going to call it your mind 
hs server and then a password i'm just going to put in one two three four then create then your friends will join the server and um so they join the hamachi server by going to system and uh, no they don't they go to network join an existing network they put in the network id so here it would be young mind hs server and capitals do matter and then password so i put in one two three four and then join now it's not going to let me join it because i'm already a member but basically that would be it then they would go into unturned and input your ipv4 for hamachi which is that one so you just click on that and click copy ipv4 address and then they input that along with the port 27015 and then any password you've set on the server and then you can play together in the next section of this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to port forward for unturned how to port forward your unturned server now the first thing you're going to need to do is type in not that you're going to need to type in command prompt into your search bar then all you'll need to do is type in ip config now you should see something that says ipv4 address now what you want to do with that is copy it and then just type it into your um your uh, web browser that should take you to your router page if it doesn't uh, you'll need to google your router and then um default router site or default router domain something like that and it should come up with it then what you need to do is go to um security and then services now this might be called ports on yours it might be called port forwarding um but for me it's called services then I'm going to click add service, I'm going to call it uh, unturned, TCP and UDP, start port 27015, finish port 27015, and we're going to apply that. Now if your service uh, was called like port forwarding or ports, that might be you finished, but for me um, that doesn't include the firewall. So I'm going to have to go to inbound services because we're wanting connections coming in and we're going to click add and we're going to go down to the port we just created unturned and we're going to go allow always. Now what we need to do is copy in our, um, our uh, IP from earlier. So just the one that you see up the top if that's the one you used. If that's not the one you use to connect your browser, you need to use the one you found in the IP config. And then we're gonna apply. So that's absolutely everything there for um, for the uh, router. Now the last thing we need to do is in uh, the firewall. So if you don't know how to get here, you just type in uh, firewall. You go to advanced settings. And then you go to inbound rules. And then we click new rule. Go to port, uh, TCP specific port 27015, allow this connection, all of these, and then we're just going to call it unturned TCP, then we're going to go new rule, port again, UDP 27015, next, allow, yes, unturned UDP and then that's everything up and running for you if you want your serve uh, friend sorry to join the server all you need to do is give them the uh, IPv4 address in your IP config and then they're able to join your server in this part of the tutorial I'll be showing you how to get rocket mod for your unturned server if you came here through a timestamp all you'll need is a setup unturned server and you'll either need to have it port forwarded or be using Hamachi. So what you want to do is come to the link in the description um, and click the get rocket mod button. Then all you need to do is click get rocket mod and that'll take you to the GitHub. Then you want to click rocket.unturned.zip. This will start the download for rocket mod and you just want to put it on your desktop. Then when you go back here you want to take this and extract it. This will give you a folder called modules and scripts. 
the one we're looking for is modules so what you want to do is go into your folder so the steam one go to steam apps common unturned 3ds um, and then drag the modules in then you want to go back and run our server starter so it's um, server starter dot bat and we want to just basically let it load up then you will see here at the top it will say rocket mod for unturned um, has been loaded and this basically means you've loaded rocket mod onto your server um, this it probably is the most simple it ever has been it used to be a kind of complex process to add rocket to your server um, but now it definitely is easier so you're gonna just wait for this to load up um, to make sure there are no errors and um, there shouldn't be if you've done it correctly all the steps um, so if you're getting an uh, error when you load into game saying unofficial module unsupported make sure that the server is on your desktop and now we can see the server has pretty much been set up there we go so now we can see the server set up and we can go up and see all the commands that we now have in the next portion of the tutorial I'll be showing you how to configure these commands and how to set up groups so individuals can use them in this part of the video I'll show you how to configure rocket mod if you've came here through a timestamp all you'll need is an unturned server with rocket mod installed so you want to go into your server and click rocket then you want to open up commands.config because this basically has the name of every command in the game well not in the game in um, rocket mod so these are the commands you're going to be using so then you want to minimize that and open permissions.config now in this is basically where we want to create our groups um, so this is basically how we give people commands so default is the first one so this is the one that everyone will get when they join the game so what do we want people to have when they join the game well let's say we want them to have p compass and rocket all on a zero second cooldown so that's fine but then say we want um, a VIP group to also have kick so all you need to do is go and highlight this copy it press enter at the end and paste it in and then the only thing we need to change is the name of the command so we need to input kick here so as you can see now we our VIP members have a permission with zero cooldown that is kick so they can kick people on a zero cooldown if you want to increase the cooldown you just type it in there so that means they can kick someone every minute and a half then to add a group for example if you wanted to add admins you would just copy from group up to group make sure not to get groups or the other group and um, then go to the last group you see press enter and paste now we need to change the ID so let's say we wanted to change this to super admin uh, so we call it super admin display name we want to maybe display as SA for super admin color and uh, let's say we want black and then uh, the commands we want them to have we want them to have god mode we want them to have kick and if you if you ever get confused what commands you want to give people just go to the commands thing and you can see them all here so let's say we want to give someone um, debug as well we want to give our super admins debug boom all you need to do is type in debug and that's it it's really simple you're just creating groups and then if you want to give people a group what you need to do is go into your server um, and boot it up so server starter.bat wait for it to load up and there's um, two ways you can do this you can either do it through their steam ID if they're not in the game or if they're in the game you can do it um, just normally so we're gonna wait for it to load up here so we can do this and then I'll, st I'll show you what you type in basically so we're almost loaded up. here we go so you type in permissions then you would put in the name so my in-game name is uh, a and unturned this isn't going to work because I'm not in the server but this is what you would do so you type in permissions their name and then their group so say I wanted to give myself uh, VIP I believe it's VIP and um, obviously it's going to return invalid parameter because I'm not in the game and um, but it would be like that or you could type in their steam ID so you could type in permissions 
um, I don't know my Steam ID, but be like something like that, and then VIP, and that would add them to the VIP group. If anyone has that Steam ID, they are now added to my um, my Steam group, so I, I have to VIP on my server. So I hope they enjoy. In the next part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to get unturned plugins on your server. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you how to install Rocket Mod plugins. If you've came here through a timestamp, all you'll need is an unturned server with Rocket Mod installed. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the description and click the link for Rocket Mod plugins archive. This is basically where I get my Rocket Mod plugins. So and um, then we're going to pick a couple that we like. Um, so you can just look for the pages as you want. I'm going to get TPA and kits because they're standard. Um, so you just want to click download, it'll take you to the mega link and just click download again. Then you just want to save it to your desktop or wherever you want. Um, and then we're going to go back and get kits as well. Again, you can do this with any plugin you want. They're all the same and you don't need to get all your plugins at once. So now that we have TPA and kits, we're just going to extract them. So extract. And that should give you two DLLs. Then what we're going to do is copy them. Click on Steam. Go to Steam Apps. Common. Unturn 3DS. Servers. Go my DHS server, Rocket, plugins, and then paste them in there. Then all you need to do is go back to Unturn 3DS and run your server. What this should do is it should load up Rocket and then load your plugins after. So when we go back and check, there should be whole folders there instead of just the DLLs. So what we need to do is wait for this to load up. Obviously it's going to take a while because it's got to load all the Rocket Mode plugins and then all the um, additional ones we've just added. So as you can see, it's loaded up now, so we're just going to go ahead and shut it down. Then we're going to go back into Servers, Come in the Server, Rocket and Plugins. What you should see is you should have two folders for each. And they should have these inside. In the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to configure these plugins um, so you can use them on your own server. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you how to configure Rocket Mod plugins. Now, if you've came here through a timestamp, what you'll need is a unturned server set up with Rocket Mod installed, and you'll also need to have plugins installed. So the first thing you want to do is go into your plugin and go to the configuration file and open it up. Then um, this will basically have the whole configuration for the plugin. Now it's different in between plugins, but it's all self-explanatory. So this is TPA cooldown. So in seconds, how long do you want the cooldown for TPA to be? I'm going to put it as 10 seconds. Then there's the delay between TPA. So this is 10 seconds. Ninja effect ID. Um, so you just put the ID in there. TPA delay. So if you want a delay um, between TPA, you put true there. Cancel on bleeding, so this is if you want um, it to be, if someone's bleeding, they can't use TPA. Cancel on hurt, this basically means if they get hurt while um, using the TPA command, they won't be able to do it. TPA cooldown, um, so this basically means does TPA have a cooldown. Um, so obviously if you um, kind of set this to um, true, this one will become relevant. If you set it to false, it doesn't matter what you put here. Then the next one is Ninja TP. That basically means if you can do it without anyone knowing. So now we're going to look at kits. So you, again, you want to go into configuration, and this is how you set kits. Um, so as you can see here, we've got a bunch of um, kits here. So name, survival, money, um, true, uh, vehicle true. So this is basically if you want to set where a vehicle, you would change this. So if I wanted to give someone some money at the beginning, I could do that. Um, but I'm just going to leave them both at nil. Um, and then the vehicle, if you're giving them a vehicle, um, you want to set it to um, the vehicle ID. Then the next one is item IDs. Um, so what you want to do is come across to this site. And this will basically tell you what IDs. So say if you wanted to give someone one eagle fire, you would say item ID 4, amount 1. And then say you want to give them some bullets for that, 
you would see um, military magazine. So that's number six. So I want to give them three military magazines. And then let's give them an Alice pack, which I believe is 255. Um, is it no longer called an Alice pack? I believe it was 255. Was the um, was the one, let's see, 255. Oh no, so they've changed it. So it's 253 now uh, for an Alice pack. So 253, and I want to give them one of those. Then uh, the cooldown, so how long before you can use this. Um, so again, 10 seconds, I think it's fair. And if you wanted to add another kit, all you would need to do is copy this one from kit to kit, and then press down and add it at the bottom there. And then obviously you would need to change the name. Um, so I'll change it to um, Young Mind. And then you would do that. So that's how you configure kits. They all work the same way. Um, but obviously they'll have different options in the configuration. So it's just about reading them um, and working out how they all work. In the last part of this video, I'll be showing you how to get a dedicated server so your server will appear on the server list. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you how to get a dedicated unturned server so it will appear on the server list and anyone from around the world can join. So the first thing you want to do is come to the link in the description and that'll take you to this page. Then you want to click the server that's closest to you. So for example, me, it is um, UK. Then I want to put game slot, so I'm going to put 24 because I'm looking to play with a lot of friends. And then memory boost, I'm going to put 4 gigabytes of RAM. Then I'm going to hit start playing and wait for it to load. Then it should load it up for me, my unturned server. And then I'm going to click on um, premium SSD just so my server is faster. And I want my own IP address. Um, there aren't actually available for the UK. So if you wanted your own IP address, you could change it to Germany. So I do. So I'm going to change it to Germany so I can get my own IPv4 address. And I'm going to uh, get contract. So I'm going to pay three months uh, worth of contract. And then I would check uh, my payment method. So they accept a lot of different versions. Um, so all you would do here is click how you want to pay. And then buy now. Then it would take you through the system and you would be set up with your server. Now I've already done this before so I'm just going to go into um, my items. If I can find it. I believe it's this one. And here's my server. So I've already got it set up. Um, I've got it in uh, Germany and I'm just going to look at it. So basically if I wanted anyone to join this and if you guys want to join this server all you need to do is put in the IP address, um, this, and then the port 27015. Now it was offline because there was an update to Unturned recently um, so I was updating it and I was changing about the server, putting Rocket Mod on and things like that. But this is a great way to get a server and it's very very cheap. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. It was a lot of work to make and um, it took a long time um, so I really hope you guys would appreciate it and like this video, subscribe and if you want to go that extra mile and support me I do have memberships on my channel now so that is something you can do too. Anyway guys, till next time, I'll see you soon.